good evening uh, mohan sundaram uh, good evening madam are you there can you hear me uh, yes ma'am i can hear you hello uh, yes ma'am i can hear you hello Mohana Sundaram, can you hear me? Uh, yes, ma'am, I can hear you. Okay, you can't speak. Anyway, uh, fine. Uh, tell me, uh, are you the only student? Uh, no, there are uh, four more students. Hello. Uh, hello. Hello. Or anyone else is joining with you for other uh, classes, for other subjects, maybe? Uh, yes, there are four more students. Just a minute, I am able to uh, Google Meet. You can type in if you can't speak. If your microphone is not working properly or whatever, you can type in, but it should be interactive. If I don't get any answer, how will I continue? I'm waiting for your reply. If you can unmute yourself and speak, it would be better. Just a minute. OK, there are three more students. Fine. So shall we wait for them? Sure, okay. I'm waiting. Uh, hello, uh, good evening. Uh, can you hear me? Uh, good evening, ma'am. Can you hear me? Hello. No, I can't no. hear you. 
I can see you speaking, but. Uh, Ma'am, actually, uh, uh, I think. Uh, 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 no, I can't hear you. I think. Uh, uh, I can hear you. Uh. You're using your laptop or mobile? Uh, uh, I'm using my uh, laptop. Yes, yes, yes. My? No, mine is. Uh, Ma'am, actually, I can hear you. Speaker volume is set to low, no. Uh, hello. It's full. Uh, you are using laptop now, just a moment. Uh, I uh, think I can. Yesterday it was okay. Uh, I was using the same system. Hello, hello, hello. 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 No, my YouTube is working. From there, I'm getting the sound. Uh, hello, hello. Uh, no, my mic is also okay. Uh, hello. Uh, hello. Hello. Anyway, uh, shall we continue like this? I don't know. Uh, but, uh, we'll continue. Instead of wasting time, uh, okay. we'll continue. What about the other two? Okay. Uh, I, have, I have sent a message. Uh, I think uh, they will join. Is your microphone properly? Uh, yes, ma'am. My uh, phone is properly working. Uh, my mic is properly working. I had classes today. Uh, my mic is properly working. OK, you uh, had classes today. Mm, what is the issue? Uh, hello. 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 Fine. So, uh, shall we wait for them for a while? Did they respond to you? Uh, uh, le uh, uh, let's wait for uh, uh, two to three minutes. Please. Okay, fine. Hello, hello, hello. <coughs> hello.
हेलो ओके सो विल स्टार्ट yeah so please uh, switch on your video so that i can see whether you are able to understand or not and uh, uh oh, okay uh, yes ma'am okay and uh, just speak so let me see if my earphone problem with the earphone or speak something hello 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 can you hear me no fine anyway i need not put the earphone because anyway i am not able to hear so uh thing is the your subject is a mixture of many uh topics uh, let me share my screen first of all yes sir you must have got the material uh yes i have the material <clears throat> yeah yeah i to have the soft copy so i'll just uh, i believe you can see my screen uh, shared so so we have the four blocks uh, of books and you have many uh, topics related to uh, data mining then the advanced dbms then xml etc okay many are there and uh, okay. like uh, all of them are very important so i would like to begin with uh, data mining uh, the general concepts and important concepts in data mining okay so i'm not going through the uh, textbooks whatever is given to you uh, you can just uh, pick up uh, that matter wherever it is i'm just uh, opening a, a pdf where important concepts of data mining are there okay from there we will uh, discuss Uh, okay okay see it's uh, it's from some uh, site and i found it useful so i've just copied it it's from bssut bulla doesn't matter okay okay so what is data mining first of all we need to understand like let me know uh, are you uh, do you have any idea about uh, computer knowledge anything so if you can just tell me based on that i can uh, help you out what knowledge you have about computers okay fine uh, any knowledge about data mining dbms i have a idea about java and idea about uh, n just a minute um you have you have any idea okay my background is bcom okay fine so you do not know anything about data mining right uh, no fine okay so i'll give you some uh, basic idea based on which you can further uh, study see first okay. of all uh, we need to understand uh, that data is some raw facts and figures okay whenever you process them it becomes information okay and data is available abundantly everywhere in this present uh, scenario okay you may have lots of data in social media lots of data in your whatsapp lots of data in an organization etc but this data uh, 
is available in raw you can make so much of analysis based on this data okay so that is called data mining you have to mine the knowledge out of the data so there are several techniques that will be used in data mining that help get knowledge from the raw data available okay so uh, as we go for uh, mining gold from coal yes that is then we call that as gold mining but here what we do is there is lots of data out of which we mine knowledge so we should be calling it as knowledge mining but it's a misnomer okay but we usually tell because knowledge mining is a big term so we just say that it's a no, it, it is data mining okay but actually we are not mining data we are mining knowledge from data okay okay fine next is uh okay what are the tasks that you are going to do in data mining you have to perform several important uh, things like this like you are going to go for um classification like whatever data will be available you have to classify into various categories okay then perform as association rule mining association means what is the relationship between two sets of data that you have to find out then we have to go for anomaly detection or outliers that is if we have a data what is an exception in that particular data like for example in real life situation how uh, we can uh, relate to uh, this particular anomaly detection or outlier say for example we have a credit card and we have we, we are spending uh, almost uh, a single transaction daily uh, every month okay so uh, it so happens that suddenly uh, like or you can say uh, i am the i am the person who least uses least uses the credit card in a month i'll be use i'll i'll be just making two or three transactions and that too of a very small amount but suddenly it so happens that one day uh, i make a transaction of a huge amount so that is an outlier so that uh, creates suspicion and uh, it so happens that um, somebody is uh, some uh, that some fraud might have happened okay so that that uh, difference in uh, difference in spending uh, thing is going to uh, create an alarm okay so such things the normal data will be there and then that is an outlier that uh, transaction is an outlier because till uh, for so many years you have been observing that uh, only two or three transactions of a very small amount has been uh, are being done every month but then suddenly ek din aisa matlab you get a big amount uh, transaction so there was there will be a doubt okay so such things are uh, outliers and uh, association is uh, like which two things can be uh, put together so that uh, sales will increase like if we are going to sell bread and jam together then naturally they are going to be sold like if you put jam and bread at different places then uh, how uh, how can they be related like uh, people might not uh, might not buy both of them together if you put them together in the shelf then there are chances that most of the things uh, like both the things will be bought together okay so many things are there we will uh, go and discuss all of them soon mm. okay so thing is uh, this diagram is very important in data mining it says there are various sources of data okay the bottom figure is says that there are various sources of data it could be from a database it could be from a data warehouse it could be from our internet or from any other information repositories so uh, what is uh, so data will be collected from all the sources and because data is collected from various sources it will not be in the same format and it might contain impurities also it might contain impurities also impurities means noisy data which is not of our use okay so such data has to be cleaned integrated so that it is collected from multiple sources it has to be brought into a single source and whatever data is required for us then we will select that and then we will be storing it in a data warehouse server after we process we we call all this as pre processing steps 
okay the pre-processing steps the data cleaning the integration the selection and then transform the data into the form we want because whatever we collect will not be there in the format we want so all these things uh, have to be uh, performed after which we are going to store it in a database or a data warehouse server now now this data is ready to be mined okay now what is going to be mined this data is going ready to be mined who is going to mine it the data mine data mining engine is going to mine the data for us now when it is going to mine the data for us uh, after having mined the data we require that the data be present in some uh, patterns i mean to say we will not be interested in all the data that we mine we will we will be interested only in a particular set of data so particular patterns of data only we might be interested say maybe uh, maybe i might be interested ki uh, in a in a store uh, only um, like uh, what accessories are being sold what accessories are being sold and that to uh, in a particular month okay in a, or at the end of every month what particular accessories are stored uh, in in a cloth store or maybe i i am interested in men's clothing how many are being how much is being sold so uh, every month uh, that kind of a pattern is uh, maybe may of maybe of interest and whenever we are going to uh, this data mining engine is going to mine those things and uh, only those patterns that are interesting we use the word interesting okay uh, and how do we decide whether a pattern is interesting or not there are several measures with which we uh, can check whether a pattern is interesting or not okay like one pattern might be interesting for you but might not be interesting for me but it's not like that we are going to have a particular formula or a method for uh, measuring the interestingness of the patterns that are mined from the that are mined by the data mining engine and after having done that that is presented to the user okay so the data that is collected from all the sources is pre processed that is cleaned integrated and selected then that is stored in the data warehouse which is mined mined means there are various um, steps or various ways in which mining can be done and uh, the data mining is all about that so we can use any one of the procedures depending upon our need and out of which whichever is um, whichever pattern is interesting again some rules will be there that pattern that pattern will be presented to the user and while mining as well as while evaluating the patterns we will be requiring or taking the help of the knowledge base see these data that is available maybe uh, maybe a uh, railway data maybe an data of an organization maybe a data of a uh, hospital okay so we cannot club all the data together we if we are collecting data from the medical sector then all the data from multiple hospitals will be collected but then they will be of different format so we are going to pre process it and then and then go for it then if we have to evaluate a particular pattern then we need to have a knowledge base knowledge base is we need to have knowledge in that particular domain until and unless we have knowledge in that domain we cannot understand what we want or what we are mining so that knowledge base helps in pattern evaluation as well as the mining process okay so this is the overview of data mining what exactly happens in data mining okay so we will see various steps that happen in data mining and data warehouse data warehouse is it's just a read only database where the data gets stored pre processed and then it, it gets stored from where data mining will take place okay so the the knowledge base etc everything is written whatever i have told each component is being explained over here you can go for it um, study that okay so this is what is told data mining processes you state the problem and formulate the hypothesis actually what you want what you want you just go for it and then you collect the data how from the data um, basis in the below part and then pre process the data as i was telling uh, that is you remove the unwanted uh, data and then you um, scale it feature it i mean to say put it into a single format and uh, simple format and then estimate the model or maybe uh, these are the things that are written that is already there in the diagram here 
the same uh, thing is given over here. Okay, and then comes, uh, okay, so uh, the data mining uh, system is based on these things. I mean to say uh, several domains. You you need to know um, information about, I mean to say no, you need to have knowledge about statistics because several formulas are based on statistics and uh, many things are based on information, machine learning, information science, visualization, because finally, whatever you mine, you have to present it properly to the user, because if you can't present it properly, then there's no use. You might be having knowledge, you might have mind, but then if you're not able to present it properly to the user, then it's of waste. So several visualization techniques have to be used in order to, uh, like in data mining. Okay, so data mining is not a single discipline, but it's a collection of multiple disciplines. Okay. Okay, now how are we going to uh, mine the data? Mine uh, based on the different databases that we have, based on the kind of knowledge, and then based on the techniques that we use, and based on the applications. Techniques means there are various techniques we will see here. Uh, that, that is what is written. You can just go through that. And here, this is the main thing. Uh, classification according to the kind of knowledge. These these are the one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight important um, uh, classifications, I can say, uh, in uh, data mining. Okay. So like characterization and discrimination. Like characterization is you find out the characteristics of the data. Discrimination is you just see how it's different from the other data that you take care of. Association and correlation is how you associate two different items uh, in the data. Classification is again, classification is you know a particular group of, uh, you know a group of things and then you classify the things. Like suppose I tell out of uh, out of uh, 10 students or out of 100 students in the class uh, just divide them into male and female i have given you the classifying label male and female you can easily do it okay so again i tell you uh, those who have passed the particular subject those who have failed i tell you you can easily do it so similarly clustering clustering is also grouping but then i will not tell you i will not tell you uh, how to group okay i'll just tell you group if i tell you divide it divide the class into male and female the information is known to you you can easily do it but clustering is simply group i tell so it depends on you how you group Okay, based on male or female, based on past or fail, based on region, maybe belonging to south and maybe belonging to um, north. So anything you can group. Okay, based on based on the characteristics you have to group. So the class label is not provided in clustering. Both mean uh, grouping together. But if the uh, if the in classification the class label will be given to you, but in clustering um, the label will not be given to you. Okay, so uh, then outlier analysis, as, as I was giving you the example of the credit card thing. So outlier, many things are in a group, but few things will be lying outside the group. So we are interested in these exceptional things because that uh, are useful many times. Okay, so that is outlier analysis. Outlier is those items that lie outside the groups are of importance to us. Okay, similarly evolution, how data evolves how data uh, from the beginning it keeps on up, gets updated and evolves so that is evolution analysis and again uh, prediction is uh, you uh, with the present data you create a model and if an unknown thing is given to you you should be able to uh, tell to which class it belongs like suppose we are teaching like we are teaching you and um, then we will conduct an exam and in that exam we will give you uh, similar question and you should be able to answer it so if you are able to answer correctly then my teaching or my classification or my prediction is 100 percent correct but if you are unable to do so then my uh, prediction model of how i have taught you is a failure so it depends how much you pass so exactly here also what happens is with a set of data a trainer, a, a, a training is given to the model or a classifier. And then 
an unknown uh, thing is questioned is questioned and if that classifier is able to correctly classify it then the accuracy of the classifier is so told to be 100 percent otherwise it's not or maybe it's less like suppose during the test we will give five values out of which it is able to correctly classify three then we say okay five uh three out of five it got so like that okay so if you have understood this uh, basically under each category under each category we have several algorithms and we'll discuss uh, important uh, ones okay so basically data mining is all about these um, things like according to the kind of knowledge we mine what are what which knowledge what knowledge are we mining based on that classification of uh, like data mining uh, tasks are there then based upon the type of uh, techniques what techniques are actually used and here based on the type of applications in which application are we going to use or on what kind of data are we going to mine is it telecommunication data is it stock markets data in stock market or lots and lots of data is abundantly available so we need to mine that particular data then emails so many emails are there everywhere so that main data needs to be mined major issues again so you have different kinds of knowledge in different uh, databases so it becomes a huge task and uh, you need to mine at multiple levels of abstraction i mean to say uh, if you have to mine in depth or maybe just uh, uh, just as an overview or uh, you need to know the background knowledge of what you are mining as i was telling uh, if you have to mine medical data you need to understand what the data actually means like if you do not know the terms etc how will you uh, how, how are you going to mine okay so that way you need to have a knowledge about the background or about the domain knowledge and then you need to know uh, the query languages i mean to say you need to know uh, how to query the uh, interface like what you want how do you ask the system the data mining uh, engine how will you ask it so these are the challenges actually these are the ones then how are you going to present the data that you have already mined you should be presenting it properly so that is a big uh, challenge then if you have incomplete data that is the raw data if it is incomplete or if it is noisy noisy means uh, the data is not of uh, up to the mark so if that is the case then what is going to be done so how are you going to make up for it then pattern evaluation then scalabilities and all these things are uh, um, like they are the challenges okay okay see th th this is again an important thing knowledge discovery in databases the data mining process is actually known as the knowledge discovery in uh, databases okay why because we are discovering the knowledge the knowledge is already there in the huge amounts of data we are just discovering it so in short that process is known as uh knowledge discovery in databases okay uh, just let me ask you are you able to follow what i'm uh, telling till now okay good uh next comes okay so th th this is again important as that figure was important and uh i'll share this uh these things this thing this part is important similarly this is important kdd okay so in kdd what happens again the same things whatever i have told but these are the terminologies that you have to remember if the data has to be cleaned then cleaned means the noisy and inconsistent data is to be removed then data integration why because data comes from multiple sources so it has to be integrated into one single source called and it will be stored in the data warehouse then not all the data that is uh, in, uh, integrated will be stored there data will be selected whatever is required will be selected and then transformed uh, into uh, transformed uh, into a format into a common format okay then the mining process will start then the evaluation and the presentation of the knowledge to the user so whatever we have seen uh, in the diagram the steps are like this okay so you have to relate that uh, diagram with these steps 
okay so this is the, this is a very uh, important uh, diagram whatever we have read over here i think just let me maximize this see this is the one the databases and flat files then cleaning and integration then selection and transformation then the mining step starts in this mining in this mining step what happens is these things here these things any one of them will happen in the data mining step okay so these are the data mining uh, characteristics or functionalities functionalities of data mining so here at this particular stage in data mining stage any one of those functionality will happen then the you will be getting the knowledge and that knowledge will be evaluated and then presented to the user okay so this is a very important diagram so the first diagram those things and these are the ones now okay now this definition is important now we have been telling that the data will be collected from multiple sources and will be stored in a data warehouse okay now what is that data warehouse the definition of data warehouse is to be understood clearly a data warehouse is a subject oriented integrated time variant and time variant and non volatile uh, data okay uh, in support of management's decision making process okay so subject oriented means a data warehouse will be revolving around a single subject say sales so all the data related to sales will be stored there so nothing related to purchases or nothing related to uh, salaries nothing related to income anything nothing will be stored only uh, data related to a particular subject is going to be stored in a data warehouse integrated of course it's uh, it gets all the sales related data from multiple sources and it will be stored in that that is why it is integrated time variant time variant is it is interested in uh, storing historical data that is all old 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 data we are not in a data warehouse we do not store uh, like data from uh, last past month or past 3 months and so on we keep even older data like 4 years 8 years 10 years 12 years 14 years so it's like an archive it's like an archive okay so old data will be stored with us and as much as possible data will be stored with us okay in the data warehouse so it's time variant okay and non volatile once the data is there in a data warehouse it will not change we are not going to update it we are just going to store uh, one version of it maybe if we get another version of it next year we will put that also but we are not we are never going to delete the data we are not going to update the data we are just going to dump the data into the data warehouse okay so these uh, four terms are important for mentioning uh, or defining the data warehouse okay sorry uh okay now okay see this thing this 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 is another this could be a question also long question a three tier data warehouse architecture see whatever i've told you in general i'm you must be thinking i'm repeating the same thing but the question could be in any format okay uh and believe me or not i'll be telling the same thing every time because uh i'm telling this in in general maybe i'll going i'll be going uh into each specific thing so if you understand the general term then naturally the other things will be clear for you like like after see again i'll tell i'll uh, discuss that later maybe see this thing again again the same thing but the diagram is different it says it's a three tier architecture for data warehouse see again we are having at the bottom Okay. at the bottom we are having operational databases and external sources from where we collect the data and then we are going to extract clean see th these are the things we are, we are going to do we are going to extract the data from these uh, sources we are going to clean the data that is data cleaning we are going to transform it then we are going to load the data into the data uh, data warehouse here data warehouse and then we are going to refresh it okay so these are the steps and then the, this thing is going to happen at the bottom tier i mean to say this is the actual data 
this uh, th this step is called elt process okay e even though cleaning and transformed is there just ignore it e l is load and uh, t is transform elt process and here in this particular bottom tier what we do is yeah eld or elt so here um, in this bottom tier we have the data warehouse server where we have the monitoring it's okay shreya uh, you just listen to what i'm saying uh, maybe i'll just uh, give an overview of what uh, we are uh, into it okay see uh, so you can you can understand this diagram if you understand this diagram then whatever we have discussed till now will also be understood uh, to you so i was telling that we have a lots of uh, databases where we have lots of data which could be from operational databases or any other sources like files etc and data from multiple sources is going to be extracted cleaned transformed and then loaded into the data warehouse and uh, if you have a smaller portion of the data warehouse we call them as data marts okay and uh, we have that in this in this bottom tier in this bottom tier we have the monitoring part and the administrating part of the data warehouse at the same time we have a metadata repository uh, metadata means data about the data like the data that we store in the data warehouse what is it all about like if i say um i have a table i have a table i have a uh, roll number name uh, gender and then their salary just four columns so in the roll number what kind of data should i have so i need to have a numeric data now if it is a uh, name then it should be uh, characters if it is um age then it should be it should be again numeric if it is gender i would like male and female only so if if at all i am uh, restricting or if at all i am um, specifying what what kind of data i need to have then that is metadata that is data about data okay the data i am storing in the data warehouse how it should be what constraints it should have all those things are stored in the metadata repository like i need to have uh, if age then i will tell keep my age constraint should be between say 20 to 40 only that may be for one institution maybe if i store the data for some other organization it would be from say uh, 5 to 20 so it depends so that uh considerations or those uh constraints etc will be stored in the metadata repository so this bottom tier is all about the actual data warehouse from where this data is collected and stored and subsets of data warehouse could be data marts and the monitoring part the administration part of this data warehouse and the metadata repository now in the middle tier we have olap servers what is an olap olap is online analytical processing so we have olap servers many olap servers which actually perform uh, or try to access data from the data warehouse and present it to the top tier or the user okay how they they may present the data in the form of queries analysis reports or perform data mining tasks so using any of the front end tools okay so this is a three tier architecture three tier means nothing you are just dividing the functionality of the whole thing into three things like in the bottom the data will be stored in the middle the data will be extracted and in the top tier the data will be presented to uh, presented in one way or the other okay so that's the thing so basically till now i have been telling you that data is there in various forms and we have to extract it in one way or the other use one functionality or the other and present it to the user in a in a way that uh, it it uh, he or she or the user understands okay 
but then many many terms have been used and uh, we have to going into detail may be a little bit difficult so you can just go through uh, study these things or maybe your uh, textbook the book is given to you and maybe you can ask doubts later on so this is c yeah i'll send this pdf i'll send this pdf or maybe i have uh, have been taking classes in my college for data mining only so maybe those ppts uh, would also be of help because you have a you already have a, a idea of what i told so maybe those ppts uh, are exactly like this so that ppts would be of help anyway i'll send this also okay now we were talking about ol ap like right so if it is ol ap again i'm not going into detail so just giving an overview of everything and these terms will come um, in detail later on so like if it is uh, olap now we need to perform online analytical processing but then using what using what kind of operations so it is like roll up drill down slicing dicing these are main operations now what could be a roll up or a drill down see uh, roll up is getting general information and drill down is getting more specific information say if i ask you what was the sales in 2020 okay so that is in general i just ask you the sales for a particular year so you just tell me some uh, five crores etc okay drill down i want to be more specific i'll ask you give me uh, in each quarter how much sales so that five what did i tell five crores so that five crores only has to be split maybe in the first quarter it was 1 crore in the second also 1 in the in the third it was a 2 and in the fourth it was again 1 okay now if i tell you be more specific give me uh, the sales every month so again whatever ha however we split when we sum up we should be getting that 5 crores only right say uh, we take the example of a college i ask you how many students are there in your college just so you say it's 500 okay i ask you how many are there in each branch then again you say uh, maybe in csc so many are there in uh, mechanical so many are there and so on but then if at all you sum them up it should be 500 only okay so that is the thing you if you go if you are going more specific then it's a drill down operation if you are going more general so sometimes you might just require a general figure sometimes you require a more specific figure so those uh, operations are possible and those operations are called the roll up operation or the drill down operation and similarly we have slicing slice and dice operation also so just remember all these terms it's an overview and uh, okay so just go through these things also like data transformation and all uh the data pre processing as i was telling data integration that is from multiple sources you collect the data and put it into like this from multiple sources there is some uh format with which you combine them and put it into a single format and uh, transform the data into the required format how uh, maybe uh, when i share the ppts tomorrow i'll i'll uh, tell that whatever we have discussed all these figures and all that we will quickly go through 
and the rest of the uh, things those uh, these things the data reduction and all one or two uh, methods i'll just show you so that will be easy for you to understand and you can go through that ppt also okay because in this i'm not finding it uh, suitable examples i'm not finding for data reduction and all okay and uh, association rule mining see i was telling you uh, how uh, how you have to select an interesting pattern out of the um out of the data you mine so th there are through two thresholds like confidence and uh, support they are the two measures with which we can decide uh whether a data whether uh whether the pattern that you have mined is interesting or not okay so once you mine we call that data as pattern okay and that pattern is interesting or not or how much interesting it is we can check with the help of two interestingness measures called confidence and support okay how to what is the formula for that we need to understand so these are the formulas like this so shreya you joined late i don't know if you have understood anything or not i was just giving uh, can you speak up shreya shreya you can hear me okay fine so uh do you have any other class next not today okay uh i think i have given you an overview of everything so to from uh, like tomorrow we will discuss uh, each uh, like important topic from each area okay so do you have any doubts okay so basically what we have understood today we are going to discuss the same um uh, and from each area like as as we had discussed clustering classification association so in each uh, functionality of data mining we need to pick up one one algorithm the important algorithms there many algorithms will be there uh, for that particular functionality of data mining but then we need to uh, uh, study the important ones okay so see as this is the one this is called market bas basket analysis okay this is an algorithm that comes under association okay so uh, that has to be clearly understood so tomorrow uh, i request that you uh, join on time uh, so that uh, you don't miss like shreya and uh, i think the other person he also joined and he left so it would be good that you join on time so that uh, these algorithms uh, actually these algorithms are difficult for you to understand on your own so if somebody tells you guides you then it becomes easy for you to read the next time okay so and uh, this data mining is only one uh, part you have dbms and it's a advanced dbms i feel it's a big subject then xml and so many things so let's see how we can cover them and uh, let's hope for the best so shall we um, close for today yeah your uh, name and roll number uh, shreya has left the meeting i don't think so anyway she was the one but then i'll intimate she couldn't even write her name and roll number
Okay, Shreya has joined again. Shreya, if you can listen to me, just uh, drop in your name and roll number in the chat box. Uh, yeah, ma'am. Sorry, I can hear you. Actually, there is an echo problem. And uh, also. if you are speaking, I'm unable to hear. So please uh, write whatever you want to in the chat box. Yeah, that's okay. Uh, just speak for speak. Uh, I just wanted to check my microphone whether there's some problem or what my speaker. Hello. Hello. Am I audible? You are able to listen. You are able to listen to Shreya. Oh, Shreya is speaking. Oh, then I think there's some problem from my side only. Na? Oh. Sundaram, you can able to hear uh, Yes, Shreya. We have a class tomorrow. Try to join uh, early tomorrow. So that I'll just... Uh, like today, I've given an overview. Tomorrow, uh, quickly, I'll give an overview and go deeply into the algorithms because okay, uh, that is more important. Okay. Okay, sure, ma'am. One, uh, one minute, Sandram. I just call. So I think I have a problem here because I'm unable Please, to hear. Uh, send me you. an overview of this. Uh, what, madam? Just uh, told anyway. Me. Tomorrow we'll sort it out. Okay, sure. I will send it in WhatsApp. Yes. Okay. I just called you and you didn't pick up. So I didn't fine. Just send me in uh, what oh, the over uh, headings what madam told today, and please inform okay. me that I am unable to attend the class because I have my meeting extended till seven forty five around. Uh, oh, okay, sure, I will inform. So thank you, thank you for today. Tomorrow okay. we'll meet. I'm just thank you. 